the decision for the MBA was not a simple one. And I thought, well, you know, this is a do or die thing, right? Like I either decide to do it now or you know, if I don't do it now, I might regret it. So I thought, you know, well, I got great support from my, from my boss. And so I did. So the top three things that are taken away with me, I guess the number one is the obvious one, which is all the knowledge that, that you, would get, you get from the MBA, the frameworks and, and so on. But also because of that, I guess, forced networking, you do learn uh, to communicate a lot better, a lot clearer, uh, to structure your thinking, uh, to make a case that you don't necessarily learn all that well outside of a structured environment like the MBA. And the last thing, which I personally found really valuable, particularly in a subject called uh, entrepreneurial finance, basically, you know, have a live session, you know, and a live negotiation, a live pitching with real investors sitting in the room. Challenge you, like asking you know, shooting questions that you're putting you in the hot seat. That kind of baptism of fire, <laughs> that was really enlightening. It, it was wonderful. It took about five years in the end, and I got, you know, I've hooked up with a friend of mine who had was just thinking about this startup, and it's like, well, now I feel like I have all the tools I need to be confident that I can succeed in that world. Strategic management, accounting, finance, marketing, uh, HR. My background, for example, is IT, and everything else, you know, I can say I'm an expert in IT, sure, but to run a business that's only one tiny part, and you need to, and, and I'm not an expert in any of those other things, but you have to be competent and you have to become competent to be able to, to succeed. And, you know, without, I don't know how I would have done that without the MBA, right?